Last year, Australia witnessed the worst firestorms in the country's history. So severe were the flames that they wiped out entire towns within minutes. 250 people died, as experts bear witness to now in my country, Australia. Hi, I'm Mark Corcoran, and welcome to my country, Australia. Everyone here in Australia grows up knowing the dangers of forest fires, but no one could have predicted the devastation that swept through Victoria on February 7, 2009. This documentary tells the dramatic story of the worst bushfire in our history. 250 people died in less than three hours. Nearly 2,000 homes and half a million hectares were destroyed. It's a tragic story of loss and survival, as told to Australian filmmakers who witnessed the destruction of part of their country. Here's Firestorm. This is of a scale which takes your breath away. Australia is a country well acquainted with the danger of forest fire. Many Australians enjoy living close to nature and accept the risk associated with it. On February the 7th, 2009, a series of fires started in the rural hills just outside of Melbourne, Australia. Fueled by a one in a thousand years weather phenomenon, this fire would change the way people perceive fire safety forever. This day would come to be known as Black Saturday. Black Saturday's been labelled as Australia's worst natural disaster event because of the fatality rate that we had. But it's, it's not only about the fatalities, it's also about the horror and um, the impact that those fires have had on the community generally. Located in the southeast of the country, the state of Victoria has Australia's second largest population. In recent years, Victoria has been in the grip of a record drought. A week before uh, 7th of February, we, we had had a, basically a week long of um, uh, a heat wave, which uh, did part of the job of what fire normally does, which is basically drying out the, the live vegetation. So we had a lot of scorching of uh, plants that have never sort of experienced conditions like that before. Friday, February the 6th. Victoria wakes to yet another day of record temperature. To make matters worse, a forecast is issued for the following day, Saturday the 7th, which is almost unimaginable. Saturday will be a day of extreme fire danger right across the state of Victoria and we're certainly urging everybody to be aware that they're vulnerable wherever they are and they need to plan now to protect themselves and their property from the potential for fire. On Friday the 6th uh, we started looking at the computer simulations for the, uh, the next day and uh, they were actually indicating some uh, incredibly extreme conditions. Uh, forecast temperatures in excess of 45 degrees were common right across Victoria. Uh, the computer simulations were indicating a burst of strong northwesterly winds off the Australian desert, uh, very, very dry, low humidity winds, and in addition, of course, we had that very, very heavy fuel load. So all of it together uh, meant that we were looking at an extreme situation. Fire danger ratings normally peak near 100. We were getting figures of two to 300 in some places coming through in the calculations. It was clear uh, this was uncharted waters. We were into one one of the worst situations we've ever seen. It's a recipe for disaster. And as the reality of the warnings begin to take effect, the Country Fire Authority, or CFA, and the state leaders do their best to prepare Victoria 
for the worst. It is just as bad a day as you can uh, imagine, and on top of that, the state is just tinder dry. I've been involved in firefighting for nearly 30 years, and we've been through some very, very difficult days, but I've never seen a weather forecast as extreme as this one. Victorians wake on Saturday morning to ominous warnings broadcast throughout the state. 774 ABC Melbourne, your emergency services network. Bushfire information. Today has been declared a day of total fire ban in the entire state of Victoria. The Country Fire Authority reminds you that now is the time to implement your personal bushfire plan. If you're planning to leave your property, leave early. If you're planning to stay and defend your property, you should be properly prepared. We planned pretty much as far as you could because you never know where it's going to start um, or what you're going to face, but we pretty well worked through a number of scenarios. Around about 11 o'clock uh, we became aware that the northwesterly winds uh, were surging in from central Australia across Victoria. The temperatures began to absolutely skyrocket, the humidities fell, uh, all the figures that were predicted from the day before were coming true and uh, in addition to that we were well aware of the fact that a southwesterly wind change was on its way. All of these things together uh, were really painting the picture of lethal fires developing during the day. I can only describe it as the perfect storm. The conditions, temperatures in the mid to high 40s, the fuel loading, it was all there ready to happen. It just needed a spark. Firefighters are bracing for a tough weekend with unprecedented bushfire conditions expected in the southeastern states. The heat continued to climb into record territory, pushed by an oven like northwesterly wind. Shortly before 12 noon, reports surface of a fire 60 kilometres north of Melbourne at Kilmore East. At 11.48, the Kilmore Fire Station receives a message alerting them to a small grass fire burning only 10 kilometres from their post. They have no idea that this fire would eventually turn into a 150 kilometre fire front that would go on to devastate Victoria. I remember when we first saw the huge plumes of smoke, which were off in that distance, I said to my partner Greg, oh look at those clouds, and he goes, okay, they're not clouds. There was no, con no real concern. Um, I've seen bushfires and uh, I know how they respond, or I thought I did and uh, there was no panic. Within minutes, the small, seemingly harmless fire is quickly gaining momentum, racing at high speed along the grasslands. Once this monster got going and it fueled itself, I mean, the winds were generated by its own need for oxygen. Stop fires across the road. We need um, someone to block it. The Kilmore fire crew had no chance to outflank this fire as winds gusting over 100 kilometers per hour push it into an oil-drenched eucalypt plantation which explodes into a towering column of black smoke. Our native vegetation is what we call a eucalypt. Now a eucalypt tree, it's a tree, if you like a koala eats a eucalypt gum leaf. Well the reality is they are full of oil, they're an oil based product and in some cases we, we you might call it gasoline, we call it petrol, it's petrol on a stick if you like. It is just a, uh, a big tree with leaves full of oil if you like uh, and they just add to the intensity of the fire. Part of the combustion process of any fire is you first of all need to apply heat to the organic matter and the organic matter then turns into a, a gas and it's the gas that provides the flames that burns.
run the resource and mow their throw and everything at this at the moment, okay? The fire crews can do little to stop the fire, which is now burning out of control, engulfing hectares of forest within minutes. As the fire gains in intensity, it generates more heat, and the front starts to expand. There is nothing more the crews can do but prepare for the worst. I believe even if we'd been standing there, the way the wind caught that, we would never have pulled it up. We just couldn't. It was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Incredibly, the temperatures continue to rise. During the day, a very significant weather record was broken. Uh, the, the capital city of Victoria, Melbourne, uh, reached its highest ever recorded temperature since records commenced uh, over 150 years ago. Uh, it reached 46.4 degrees. The Kilmore fire is now a raging inferno.